empty hearts and neon lights The playing with my mind Gotta get out of here tonight Oh, I wanna run off, I am flawed And I'll tell myself it's fine to be alone Just to find somewhere that finally feels like home Oh, oh, oh I hate all this overthinking Oh, 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 oh The more I swear Yo, what's going on, guys? So... <clears throat> A lot of people always ask me about like my control scheme, my control settings, so I'll just go straight to the point and I'll leave any rambling for after. So let's start with Survivor because that, that's where the, the buttons make the most difference. Uh, so to start off, obviously the sensitivity is very important. So like this regarding volume on the game it doesn't really matter because it only affects the menu but for actual gameplay um, the survivor camera speed here is really important because that's that will dictate like how fast you can move your camera and of course if you can move your camera faster you have more awareness you know of what's going on around you you can react faster because you're seeing things earlier because you're moving your camera faster and you know stuff like that also I don't know flashlights if you want to aim you know everything goes faster so it's always better to, if you can control it, of course, to have this in max. So that, that's going to be very beneficial. Now, for uh, the commands, the actual commands. Um, I like to use things that have to do with holding the button, you know, for a long time. I like to use the back buttons on top because... I don't know, I just, just feel, feels more comfortable to me at least. I don't know about you guys, you can try to see what works best for you. So I run with L2, which is again, it's a button I have to hold a lot, so I like to use that as L2. Um, oh, by the way, this build, this setup here is, is updated. I used to use something different, but I just changed it, and I feel like this is the most optimal for the current state of the game, because you have some kind of perks. Well, I'll get to it. So one thing that I changed is this is for crouching I used to use this on L1 but now I'm using this on the the, the d-pad the top d-pad and the reason for that is because you know I'm gonna use L1 for other things such as like skill checks or items you know so you, you don't want to have these two at the same because if you try like to use an item you're gonna end up crouching you know so it, you, it's best if you can have those separated. So that's why I have the D-pad here. And the reason, it's very specific also why I have it on the top D-pad, the up, up D-pad. And the reason for that is because if you do something that's called, I think it's crawl or claw. I think it's claw, probably claw. You hold the controller with what is called a claw grip. Uh, you can search it on Google. I'm pretty sure you're gonna find images. Uh, and that allows you to use the top buttons, which is like L2, L1 at, at the same time as you move the left stick and also the D-pad, you can also press the D-pad You can use all the three areas of the controller at the same time if, you, if you're using this claw grip that I mentioned So, I don't know, just, just like type it on Google or whatever And you can probably like claw grip controller or something like that, you can probably see images of what I mean um, so yeah, that's why I have it here. I used to use it on L1, but because of the new perk that, that was released, which was the, the Insta Heal perk, you heal them on the, on the ground with the new Survivor. Um, it, it can cause some complications, you know, because you don't, you don't want to crouch doing, using your, your ability and whatnot, so... This will completely separate crouching from any other action, so that, that's why I, use it. I, I, I think it's best when it's here. Uh, and like I said, you can use all areas at the same time so you, you can you can even hold this the d-pad up as you're moving your camera and you know crouching like imagine urban evading you know you can use this with urban evading without that much issue controlling all the other buttons at the same time so yeah that's why this is the first most important thing um, now for utilizing objects um, I have it at R1 now this is the only thing that is kind of you can kind of change it around, you know, because this can be either using items that means like flashlights and stuff like that. 
Um, you can put it on L1 or L1. I, I don't, you know, it's up to you. The reason why I like to, oh, or you can also use it at R2 if that's your thing. You know, just, I, cause it's something, like if it's a toolbox, you kind of have to hold it. And like I said, holding things, I usually feel more comfortable on the, the back buttons. Back buttons, I mean L2, R2. But whatever, so I use it at R1 and I'll uh, explain why. Uh, this is for dropping items. I use I use circle. I don't know. I just like it. It's just comfortable to me. But you can use whatever you want here. I recommend putting anything that's square, triangle, X, or or circle here. I don't recommend. It. I would not recommend anything else for here. And you will see why when you see the other the other buttons. Um, now this is for actions. For example, like uh, this is like for opening chests or uh, going lockers. And this is for like. Uh, gens, windows, you know. So that's why I use. I like to, like I said, you're holding a lot of things, so I like to use R2. Um, you could argue that R1 here could also work if that's, you know, you, you always have to ma mix and match here, you know, to, to not like repeat the same button on things that they're gonna pre uh, present conflict. But uh, this is what I use, right? So I like to hold R2 because, you know, you're holding gens, so. I like to hold with the back buttons, like I said, so that's why I use R2 here, and I, I also use this for windows and everything. Uh, with the new perk, it's called Saboteur, you, you, you also use this for sabotaging the hook, so you know. And same thing for like uh, lockers, like I said, uh, and uh, chests, you have to hold them for the most part, so I like to use R2 here. Now this is for um, skill checks, and this is where, this is really where the, the not really the problem, but where things can get a little, you, you you might have to switch around this. This is the only thing you have to switch around from this build here that I show you, depending on what build you're trying to run. And the reason for this is because you, you can see here, this is for my second ability, which is which is going to be things like that hard and things like the new perk, the insta heal perk. You have to use that while you're healing. And the reason why this and this cannot be the same, the skill check and this ability cannot be the same. Is, is simply because if you're using if you're using that hard, this won't be a problem if they're both the same. But if you're using the the healing perk that you have to use as you're healing, if if these two are the same, like as soon as you get like you you don't want to use your perk, right? You're just healing them normally. You want you want to spare your perk. But because the skill check is the same button as the ability activation, when you're healing them, and as you press the skill check. Uh, he's, 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 she's going to use the perk, you know, so you're gonna get broken and that's not what, what you wanted You just wanted a normal heal So that's why th these cannot be the same because then every time you get a skill check while you're healing You're gonna end up using your ability as well. So you, you don't have any control of it, you know, the skill checks will dictate That's not ideal. So that's why I have a separate and I recommend that you also do however Like I said if you're not using that perk or you don't plan I, I, I plan on using it So that's why I have this setup, but if you're not planning on using it, you just want to use like that hard or something like that um, then there's no issue if you want to have these two the same because you, you that hard you need to be running in order to use it and you're not going to be running while healing so even though you're pressing the same button for the skill check is not going to activate that hard as you're healing here or if you're crouching for that matter it doesn't matter if you're doing a gen for example it won't activate that hard because you need to be actively running for it to be able to be used so yeah that's the only note I would leave here uh, keep a, be very aware of that uh, this is for debating on the hook like when you're on struggle state this is what i uh, i like to use i don't know it's still more comfortable to me just smashing this button than anything else some people like to use it on x you can use that too if you want um you can also do this with the crawl grip it's not very comfortable for too long but you know something you can do as well oh and now let, let's cover the most tip because i have the way i have this setup is it's very specific because you, R, R1 and L1 are buttons that are really fast to press. Whereas the back buttons, which is our L2 and R2, are, are slower because you, you, you have to push them further down for them to activate. Which takes time. I know it, it's not going to be that much time, but it, it can make a difference. So that's why I have it set up this way. So th essentially what I mean, things that, that you need to like do fast, as fast as possible, they are very time reliant, like that hurt for example. You want to use them on either R L1 or R1 because that will give you the most efficient, like, you no know, activation time as you press them. And 
And yeah, that that's really the only thing. And the other ones you want to put them on the back for just comfortably, like I said, holding for too long. But the main the main thing is this: you want to put the things that you need fast reaction on the the, the top buttons. They are R1 and L1. And there's another reason because of that. You, like I see some people use that hard on X, for example. The reason why that's not good is because you have to remove. Your, the, the, the right analog stick controls the camera, right? So you have to remove your, your fingers from the analog stick in order to use that hard. The reason why, that's the reason why that's really bad because first you're gonna waste, you're gonna waste some time to remove your finger in order for, you know, until your finger reaches the X button, you're wasting time essentially. So, and like I said, the perk is very time based. So you, you, want, you want to activate that as fast as possible. So you don't want any time wasted from the time you think of activating the perks when you actually do so that's why I have it on L1 L1 allows you to use it or L1 or L1 right because the way you hold the controller it allows you to use the, the ability as you are still moving your camera at the same time which is the analog so there's no conflict that you know and there's also no waste of time is way more efficient that way so that's why I recommend using abilities on for that hard most mostly on the L1 R1 and not, not X or D-pad or anything like that that other people use. And uh, because I have the up here D-pad for crouching, uh, the, the default is the upper default for up is pointing, the animation for pointing. So I just switched that to the right D-pad and the down D-pad is for, you know, the come here motion. And the last D-pad is for, like I said, the struggle state. So everything is pretty much like is the only thing. The only problem you can possibly run with this perk, this build, I mean, is using a toolbox on a gen. Is the only is the actual only problem. Even if it, even if you're using a key, because everything is so separated and you have the crawl grip, you can still use the key as you're running, moving the camera, everything at the same time. There's no like conflict or anything. No no time wasted for you moving your fingers one place to the other. This build is like just the best I can think of. Uh, the only problem, like I said, is if you're trying to use a toolbox on the generator, for example, because you're holding R1 to use a toolbox, and you're also going to get a skill check with the R1, so, like, you're already holding, how are you going to press a button if you're already holding it, you know? So that's going to fuck you up on the, on the skill checks if you're trying to do generators with a toolbox, but generators have been nerfed, nerfed so hard that, you know, it's like almost pointless at that point to use any, but you can easily modify this. Because you're probably not going to be using like that hard, the healing perk and the toolbox at the same time, like in the same build, for doing gens for that matter. So uh, if you, for some reason, want to use toolbox on this build at the gens, just switch this one, especially this one for the skill checks. Uh, make sure these are not the same and you should be fine to uh, do that. Okay guys, so one solution you can use for the toolbox problem. But this will mostly only work if you um, you're, if you're not using that hard. If you're only using the uh, yeah, it won't it only work if you're not using that hard. Mostly the just the lifting pallet perk or the uh, for the people perk, which is the healing is to heal. Uh, which is what you can do is instead of using skill checks for. Well, yeah, no, you just change this actually the the ability button instead of using L one. You can use the L3 button, which is, this is when you press, actually press the analog. That, that is a bus button as well. So this way, if you're healing someone with R2, you can just press L. You can press the L3 because you're not moving anyway, so this analog won't be in action. And that way you can just use the, the ability right away. Or for lifting the pallets, the same thing, you would just hold it at that point. But this is not, I don't think it's that good with that hard because you're going to be using the, this analog already for movements. So it's going to be really hard to press it as you're using it for movement. But because you're using L3 here, this would open L1 because you see L1 is nowhere right now. So this would open for scoot checks, for example, or for using objects. You could, you could, you know, the R1 is the same here. You could use it as L1 because it's free now. And that would allow you to um, use the toolbox. Like I said, and the, the skill checks without it, you would have no issue. The only issue here, I think, this would work with that hard, of course, but I think it would be really hard to press that hard with this button as you're running forward. So, I mean, but you can try that as well if you want to. That 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 would completely solve the um, the toolbox issue with the skill checks. Like I said, it was the only issue. 
just want to try with that. But yeah, that would be a solution. Just a suggestion if you guys want to try that. Oh, guys, and one last thing that's super good about this build, like this setup with these, these buttons, is that if you notice, like I said, you can hold. This is another reason why I told you about the comfort with holding the the actions that you hold the button for too long with the back buttons. This also allows if you have it like I do on. You, obviously, you guys just know if you're left-handed or whatever, just switch. You can, you can always switch everything here. Like you see, you see here is L1. You could put L1. R2 could be L2. And if you change this to the opposite, like L1 would be R1. It essentially, just gonna change change the hand that you're using most mostly to do those. You know, so you're left-handed or right-handed, whatever. Use it. You know, any way you want it. It's really the the combination of them that uh that makes the if it's right or left, it really doesn't matter. You know, what I mean, it's just the combination of everything together that makes that but like I was saying the greatest thing about this build as well is that you can actually do gems with a single hand you don't have to use your second hand on the controller with this setup you can do things like use the computer literally you can literally do other things as you are doing the gen uh, while you're playing the game and the reason for that is like I said like see your actions here is R2 so I'm holding R2 to do the gens uh, skill checks are R1 so that's my second finger on the right hand. I can press them both like at the same time. And like I told you before, with having the important buttons being on the R2 or L2, which allows you to move the camera at the same time as you press them without having to like move your fingers from you know different places, like like going from analog to X, for example, you don't have to do that. If you have the buttons on top. So this this is the this thing same same thing applies here. So like I said, you're doing R2 on the gen, R1 is the skill check, and because they're, they're both top buttons, you can still move your camera with uh, your thumb on the right analog stick. So you, you can you have complete control, like you can see the gen, you can see the skill checks, you can see what the killer is doing, everything at the same time with a single hand, and your left hand is still free to do whatever you want with it. And uh, don't get too freaky with that. So. Yeah, guys, that's another like huge bonus of this build specifically that I I personally set up for myself, and I, I honestly don't think it can get any better than this. You guys, let me know in the comments if you have any other further ideas or suggestions for other people, for that matter. But this build it really just covers everything, all kinds of perks, and every the best thing is that it covers everything at the same time. Like you don't have any kind of conflict. The only conflict, like I mentioned, is the the two box with the switch X, but. I know, I personally know I'm not going to use uh, toolbox for doing gens, I just use them for breaking the hooks now, and it works great. Yo guys, what's up? So this is the, uh, I'll show you like in-game, the everything. So you see, like I said, for using items, is R1, so I can run, I'm running with L2. And as you can see, that heart only activates if I'm holding the running button. You see that L1 is the ability, so I can use that hard that way so like I'm running and I can press L1 to use that hard so I don't have to like remove my uh, fingers from the analog to do any of this I can like use that hard as I'm moving my camera and I can also like because it's R1 I can also use the, the key or whatever as I'm running and also moving my camera at the same time now for gens like I said is R2 as you can see there and skill check is R1, so I can move my camera and I can press skill checks at the same time because, because it's R1 and I'm holding R2 to do the gens. So that's that's what I mean by doing with one, doing everything with one hand. And my 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 left hand is completely free right now. Now, if you if you were healing someone, I think with self care you can anything that's like an action like this with skill checks you can do with one hand with this this setup. Um, and like I said, for any kind of ability is gonna be, you see dropping pallets is also R2. Uh, and you can see like lifting is also L1 which is the ability button, same for that heart if I'm running. So it's also something you can do while looking around and doing whatever, with this kind of build. Um, and like I said, windows is also R2, and same thing for uh, lockers 
And for chest, it's also gonna be R2. And because I said, like, it's, because it's the upper buttons, you can do all of this while you're moving your camera freely. Because you don't have to remove your hand. Like, for example, if it's X, like, I'm moving my camera. Like, if it's X, I would have to release the camera, then press X, and then I'll be able to start to move again because I would have to remove my finger from the analog. But with this build, you, the setup, you don't have to. Oh, and lastly, the running, which, not, the, the crouching, I mean. So I'm using the the up, upper D-pad for teabagging right now, and because of, because of the the claw grip, like I told you, you can do things like this. Which right right now I'm holding the sprint button, which is R2. I am crouching, which is uh, the upper D-pad, and I'm moving forward with the left stick, and I'm also still at the same time moving my my right analog stick. So if it, even if I were to do a gen. I can li literally press like six buttons at the same time if I want to. You see that I can do speed checks. I can remove my camera as I'm holding the. Uh, I'm holding the sprint button right now. I don't know if you can see because that hard is active. And I'm also I'm also holding up on the D-pad for crouching. So if I left, if I let go, you see I'm still crouched. So you can literally hold everything at the same time, and this is useful for when you want to stealth the killer. You just go into a claw grip. And you do things like this. You don't have to hold the sprint burden, but whatever, if you want to, because then you already get up as you... You will get up running already if you're holding it. So like, if the killer is here, I'm using the claw grip right now. And I can quickly, with L1, use that hard, whatever. And like I told you, the same thing for uh, healing. Any kind of action like this, you can do with one hand. And switch X is going to be a 1. Now for healing someone with that perk right there on the left, which is for, for the people. You're, you're, you're gonna be holding R2, right? For the heal. So imagine I'm healing another survivor right now, and the bar is filling up. You, you would press L1, which is the same for that hard. And for this thing right here, as you're healing someone, and it would use the perk the, for the people. So I don't have a survivor right now to demonstrate, but that's how it would work. And so yeah, that's why I think this build is super good. And like I said, because of the, the camera speed, you can quickly like... You can quickly scan a map, you know, know what, know everything that's going on really quickly and be every, every, be aware at all times. Oh, and for the pointing, like I said, is the right D-pad, and for this is the down D-pad. And now, another, now coming back to the solution that I told you, you can you use the L, L3 button or the R3 button, which I, I, probably L3 is probably better, which is the pressing the left, or actually pressing the left analog stick. If you're healing someone, imagine I'm, I'm healing someone right now with... Pretend the gen is a person and I'm healing it. You could press the uh, L3 right now and it would use the ability. If you're only using the for the people, for example, you could do it. You could do that setup and it wouldn't be... You know, you, you would not have to use L1 for the, the perk as you're healing, which would enable you to use L1 for something else, such as skill checks, which then allows you to... Like I said, use that thing with the toolbox and still be able to press the, the skill checks or, or healing, you know, use it, and press the skill checks without actually using the ability, like, unintentionally. Um, and yeah guys, that's, that's really it. I don't think there's anything else I need to cover. Oh, and I think pallets I already showed you. Windows, it's also R R2, and same thing for pallets is going to be R2, because it's everything it's considered actions.